two miles ahead of them this time. This is the Unibet Extra Place always every day. Handicap part of the London Stairs series. Juan Bermudez up in trip today, dark blue jacket. He's alongside Temporize in the red colours on the outside as they move down the back straight, turn right-handed now. Bascule, the favourite on the inside, George Rook of Author's Dream. And then Songo is a bit keen early on Songo, taking a bit of a hold there for Aidan Keeley with Danny California, Danny Tudhope's uh, mount settling a little bit better on the inside. Yeah, Songo's just not relaxed at all yet in this early part of the race as they move down the home straight for the first time here. So Juan Bermudez and David Probert out in front, leading from in second, Temporize and Franny Norton on the inside bascule. Next to the rail there, the cheek piece runner, green and red colours, already successful here tonight for the Richard Hughes team. Then on the outside comes the veteran author's dream, who, like Bascule, took part in the Cesarovich last time out. Danny California, she's the grey on the rail. And Songo just finally now beginning to settle down a bit in last place. Coming up the home straight here, smallest field of the night here at Kempton, and what's been a, a pretty busy evening and a insightful one as well as they pass the judge with a full circuit to go. Juan Bermudez, the leader, temporize, and then Bascule, Author's Dream, Danny California, and Songo bringing up the rear. Songo is bidding to get back on form following a couple of disappointing efforts by his standers recently. So moving away, interesting that David Probert doesn't feel as there's any doubt at all about Juan Bermudez getting this uh, two-mile trip today on his all-weather debut, the son of Nathaniel, as they move down past the halfway point, past the mile start there in the top left-hand corner of the track. Temporize still travelling well in second place. He's just kicked on a little bit there on the lead, you notice. Juan Bermudez just uh, trying to stretch out a bit down the back straight with Temporize uh, closing the gap to a length again. Then Bascule who's had uh, plenty of cover on the inside, racing in third place. Author's Dream in the blue headgear on the outside in the hands of Danny Musket, who's had a wonderful year. Then Danny California and Danny Tudhope on the inside. Songo is still last. Aidan Keeley, as the runners now reach the end of the back straight. Got about five furlongs left to travel now, just under that, as they move down the side of the course for the final time. It's been a decent pace. David Probert's been setting it on Juan Bermudez, but Franny on Temporize, not allowing him to get away with too much rope as they begin to approach the turn into the home straight. Bascule, the favourite, racing in third, now being squeezed along. Author's Dream gets the hurry up. So too, Danny California on the inside, closing. Needs to move her, her way out of there, though. And Songo keeping going at the back, but beginning to close on these leaders. So anybody's race, two furlongs left to travel. Juan Bermudez. Now on the inside, Bascule is beginning to eat into that lead. And then Temporize on the wide outside, Danny California being held in by Author's Dream and Songo. This is a tight one, this. Juan Bermudez is really game. He sticks his neck out again. Temporize is coming with a bit of a run. Author's Dream as well. Up towards the line, Juan Bermudez all the way winner. A double for David Pro, but that was a terrific ride. Bascule second, followed close up in third place by Temporize. They all finished close together. Well, he wasn't the all-weather champion jockey of last season for nothing. David Probert grabs a double in the best way, a finely judged ride from the front on Juan Bermudez, who's got back to the winner's enclosure for the first time on the all-weather. And in fine style as well, there were question marks about the trip, but he's taken that out of the equation by dictating matters at the front. For, for the first half of the race, nothing really happened, and he was just a pains to, to keep him up to his work on, on the far side. He looked a bit of a sitting duck when most of the runners were ranging up, even including Songa, who was hard at it, but was giving a little bit before fading away. Bascule has been in a good position to strike if he was good enough, and he's run on again and improved on the performances we've seen recently back on the all-weather. Temporized the same, but they just couldn't get to Juan Bermudez, who was one of the unexposed ones in here. We, we didn't know everything about him. Stepping up to this trip has ultimately worked out a treat then, Niall. And it's David Probert once again with another winner on the night to close the card at Kempton. Yeah, the three-year-old first and, and third here, but um, good ride with David Probert settling in front because he could have he could have overraced him as well. He's completely got, got it right out in front. 
Yeah, he rolled along early doors and was probably aware that there wasn't much pace on paper. This horse was not doing a straight routine with his ears pricked going down the back straight, looking at everything. He needed plenty of organising um, and, and, and go around the first bend. He was sort of wayward. David. And then he was looking, then he grabbed hold of it, then he spat it out and looked around the place. He just looks very immature still, doesn't he? For he's still raw mm. mile, isn't he? You would have thought he's a three year old that's on, on an upward curve and um, is appreciated stepping up to two miles for the first time. But I thought he was given a tactically very astute ride by David, who built things up. You can see him sort of going through the gears, even just coming off the top bend there. Franny Norton was aware that the pace hadn't been strong on temporised, but um, David was on the front foot and I suppose it was just a very, very effective ride from the front end. Yeah, it was always sort of, on paper, it looked like it, it could pan out this way. It did indeed, and you got the, the, the front three the whole way round, and the front three at the finish, and um, they were in, all in line, they all came out of the go, but it, it just turned into a little bit of a sprint, but it was a, a prolonged build-up to that, rather than just a, a, a travelling and, and, a, and a mad dash. Yeah. David got on the build-up half around that top band. Yeah. And the winner, sort of Nathaniel, Despite being, he's well positioned, etc., in a really steadily run race under a good ride, but I still think the way he goes around, a little bit gormless, you know, halfway around, ducking and nooking around, big baby, I still think there's more to come from him. Completely agree now. I think he's um, very raw, and um, he sort of get, he, David gave him a couple of sharp reminders in the, in the forehand and in the right hand, and then it sticked down that last sort of half bar long, and it's a couple of flicks in the backhand just to keep him up to his work. And um, to be fair, for a green horse, he kept responding and answered his all, every call, and I would have thought, with time, he's going to carry on improving. Yeah. Okay, there's the winner, making his way back in, son of Nathaniel. We'll get a look at the, the full result for our ninth and final race of the evening at Kempton Park. And five to one, he's won. Last school, the five to four favourite in second place.